So this is how I carved this tulip coffee scoop over, I think it was something like 15 to 20 hours. Um, I managed to get it down to 40 minutes. But um, I've had to speed it up somewhat to get it down to that. Well, welcome back to the channel. If you've been here before, if it's your first time, thanks for watching. And if you get a chance, it'd be amazing if you could subscribe. Really, really helpful for the channel. So, I'm just making a start here. I'm getting this bowl sorted out. I tend to hollow out the actual bowl first and then move around the back and uh, use that as a guide then to try and get the thickness of the walls about right. Nice to get them nice and thin if you can. So this is um, cherry wood so it's uh, pretty hard but it does carve nice. And I had to go with something um, pretty hard to get the uh, detail in the petals of the um, tulip that I was after. I'm nearly there now with uh, tidying this bowl up. It's the final touches really. Looks really aggressive with this um, when it's speeded up. There's a little bit more control to it than that. Right, so once I finished the bowl, um, I am denied about where to start on it, but I actually um, decided to start on the back in the end. And uh, the design that I came up with, you can just see it in the background there on a little drawing, um, the leaf goes around the back and it kind of folds around, goes up and then bends over so it forms just a, a kind of a hook that you can hang the spoon onto things. So um, that's what I'm up to now, is trying to create that um, nice edge. And then this is the uh, part of the leaf that bends over. So I'm just trying to make that look like a leaf, so it's um, having the center piece put in now. It's been a real challenge to get the um, times down on it. I find it a lot more difficult than the actual carving, I think, trying to get these videos right. <laughs> so I want this, um, this leaf to be quite thin on the edge can use the actual shape of it to give it a bit more um, body but the actual edge of the scoop I wanted to be quite thin so what I tend to do when I'm doing something like this is I've got these um, really small v-cut palm chisels um, and flex cut and they're um, really useful for putting in that first gully if you like that kind of gives you something then to uh, work to When you're taking the rest of that meat out below that it gives you a nice edge then where you want to finish up so i've moved down to the next size of v-cut tool here to get right in nice and deep into that uh channel and that's coming back the other way now so you can start to see the shape of the the leaf as it curves around the top i went out on a mission bending loads of leaves over to get the idea of the shape of this. Took some photos and I got a couple of good photos. So as you can see there I can um, now start taking that down and go up to that uh, channel then quite safely without um, chipping the edge off if you like. These pelicans knives are really nice for this um, 
getting into little bit spots like this. This is the bigger pelican knife that I've got. I've got a smaller one as well for really tight bends. There it is. So you can see what I mean there. You can get a nice, um, what appears to be quite a sharp edge on there. And then um, you actually got quite, still got quite a bit of meat there. So I'm using a little gouge now to go underneath that little um, channel I put in. And that, and then that gives you the, um, the appearance of being really quite thin. And then obviously the bit that's still going to be there and rounded off looks like the um, underside of the leaf. That's where I was going with it. So this is the... Um, the uh, side of the leaf now, further down the uh, stem as it were. Same principle. In a nice deep gully. These little VTOLs are quite nice to get into little gaps like this. Give you a nice um, clean edge as well. So on the back of the leaf, there was a, um, a vein that ran down um, on all the tulip leaves that I could find photos of kind of ran down the um the back of the leaf so uh that's what i'm up to here is i'm going to channel out like, each side of that vein and then drop down the sides just to leave that um vein a little bit raised there we go So not much, just a, just enough to give an appearance of something, throw a bit of a shadow over it. Sometimes that's all, all, all you actually need is just enough to sort of indicate that there's something there. So I flipped around now and this is the um, the front of the stem. So I'm putting in a nice deep cut in here. There's a little flex cut chip knife which I use for this sort of thing most of the time. I can go over the front of the stem there because I know that I'm dropping that back a little bit. I don't want to go too deep because I'm not sure how far back it's going yet. So, um, But either side of that stem I want it nice and deep. Cutting in the edges there. And then going down, I've put a little bit of a wave in that stem just to give it a bit of a feature, just so it wasn't a straight rod, give it a bit more of a natural um, look to it. Don't notice it so much in the finished piece. It didn't, it didn't show up as much as I thought it was going to, but I think that actually worked out better. It was quite a, um, a wiggle at that at this stage, but it did disappear. So I'm... Um, cutting a, a, a V cut in here now up to the stem when you're doing this it's, you've got to be really really careful that you're not going to cut in too deep and put a line in the side of that um, stem you don't know where that stem is going to end up so um, what, the last thing you want is a cut down the side of it so it's a bit gentle gentle trying to work out where the tip of your knife is going to be And then once you've um, opened it up, I can drop it right down. 
But um, if you remember when we put in the um, the V cut down the side there, that's pretty much where we're going down to here. Just dropping down to that um, that channel and using that channel as the edge, the the, the tidy edge, as it were, of the um, the back of the leaf. Had an annoying change of um, grain direction about halfway down this stem, which was annoying on this bit. And um, actually, when I come to do the stem as well, happens sometimes. I'm just tidying up the bowl there so it drops back into that um, leaf. As you can see, that's quite flat at the minute, so I'm going to um, put a bit more of a cut in there and start trying to drop that back in now. And then I switched over to this little detail skew chisel, which I find quite good for this sort of thing. Getting in nice and deep like this and uh, yeah, just opening it up really. So if you remember at the beginning, I said that um, I wanted the uh, leaf to sort of wrap around and then the stem to sit down in, that, in the uh, concave of the actual leaf itself. Start drawing here where I want that to um to be. And then I started questioning whether that was right or not. <laughs> so what I was trying to do here is to establish how far back that needs to be so it sits in the center of the um head of the flower. And then um establish that I hadn't gone back far enough. So out comes the rubber. Had to realize these things early on. I took another measurement there and worked out where that stem's going to end up at the back there. So I wanted it to fit in nice and deep. And I marked that off there, and that kind of gave me an idea then how far that needs to go back. And I can round it round the bottom and then it should be fairly round then hopefully. All things being equal. Quick double check. We'll go for it and we're putting this um like a v cut here at the bottom just to give me that depth and then i uh went that back down through and took the rest of it out and as you can see there i'm starting to round off the edges to create the roundness in the stem i've got this nice um cranked straight palm chisel which is lovely for um getting into places like this i only did it um it was it nice to get a nice straight um finish on the actual leaf itself but it curled in around to allow me to do the back of the stem as well it's kind of nice the stem was not completely freed away from the leaf it kind of um there was still a a, a small strip in the back just to give it strength obviously this is a spoon to be used so I wanted it to still um, be usable. So many times I've stranded, a castaway, and I'm now sure of those stranger in the scars. Back with that little cranked chisel again just getting in underneath 
you see that stem there it doesn't look quite so wiggly as it did on the uh, when I first drew it out but actually it's fine it's just a small slight wave which kind of looks more natural I think See the um, picture or the photograph of the tulip in the background what I was trying to aim for I had about three photos all with slightly different features that I liked so that one was um, I like that one because it give you a, it, it was quite deep so there was a quite a deep bit in to the actual um, head of the flower which is um, what I was hoping to achieve there's a couple of other features on a few of the others so I'm working that in there so it looks like it's sat inside of that leaf now. So I'm just trying to drop it in behind now. And whilst doing it, starting to shape the head of the flower. Gonna work out there with the um, how much to take off. Just rounding that over there. So I'm just getting this ready now to start putting that detail into the. Um, there's a nice bit of grain on that side there. You'll see that as the carve goes on. It looks um, really quite nice on this one petal. And just taking this side down now and tucking it in underneath. There's the other um, drawing I was working off. So I'm just working that stem up now, just thinning it out a little bit. It was slightly thinner at the top than the bottom, but not a lot. Right, the big moment. So this is opening up the flower now. We're obviously happy with the um, shape of it. And we're just going to bring these two um, petals open. Put in a nice deep cut to start with. working in a V cut now just trying to open that up. There's always quite a risk here when you're doing stuff like this that the um, the edge of the, f the, the petal is going to break somewhere so it's just a matter of being absolutely really careful trying not to um, flick stuff out, bend stuff over. There's always that temptation just to flick a bit out and that's when it goes better just to keep cutting one way, cutting the other, cutting one way, cutting the other until it goes. So there's two things to think about here really. It was, um, one was to keep the edge of the, the petal nice and clean, but also the bit that you're leaving inside was another um, rounded um, element to the flower if you like the flower head it kind of sat inside so you couldn't yeah I had to be mindful of the shape of that as well and then at the top obviously it opened up to another three or four petals so I have to keep that in mind as well and leave that 
if you look at that the picture on the left hand side there that's quite deep there and that's kind of what I wanted to do because that um, to me would give you a lot more shadow and stuff so at the bottom of the flower that's what I worked with to get that nice deep element to it so you can see that's starting to form that roundness now like a raised center with a, um, a, a split in the center Tiny little bit of detail that was actually on the um, the photograph that's on the phone um, that left a little tiny piece in the centre and it dropped it back further each side so it's just a little bit of detail right where the tip of the knife is there so that's why I'm being really careful here is to try and leave enough in there to be able to create that bit of detail in the bottom. up now so I can put the actual detail in. It's almost like a, a, an inner stem in there. So this was the bit at the top where it turned into um, those several um, petals here. This was quite a challenge. Again, it's um, a massive danger of breakout here. It's just steady, steady, steady. It's quite a few hours work went into that. Obviously cut a fair bit out. As I'm sure nobody wants to sit and watch six hours, which is what, um, how much footage I started off with. challenging as this was it was really enjoyable though I was almost disappointed when the um, carve come to an end on this one I could have undoubtedly used something a lot softer here wood wood wise um, something like a bit of lime or something like that and the carve would have been a fair bit easier but I don't. I I wouldn't have got the um, the detail. I don't think the the the, the cl cl cleanliness of the edges, should we say, crispness. I've done some stuff with um, hazel recently, and I did think about using a piece of hazel for this, but um, I went with a good old faithful bit of cherry. And where you are with that, it's hard work, but. Definitely get some nice edges on it. Another wood that I find really good for that is um, a, a load of crab apple. And um, yeah, all apple woods are pretty good. Uh, crab, crab apple seems to be um, particularly good for holding very fine um, edges, especially when you're doing like um, chip carving, the real tiny chip carving that I've done in the past. It holds really well on that. So we're really getting there now. We've um, just started to shape the actual um, leaf now. So I've done all that stuff inside and I left quite a bit on the actual um, edge of the, the leaf itself and then started to work that back in. Obviously it's easier to work um, on the outside and be a lot more gentle.
had a um, a ridge you can see running down the um, petal there, which which I put in in a similar way to what I done with the leaf on the back of the leaf. Just a bit more detail. It's really starting to get there. Can you see me um, drawing in that ridge there? So just um, give me some of the work away. It's just kind of um, folding away from that center line, really. And it kind of then just leaves you with a, um, a ridge over the, over the top. You see I'm doing that there. I was kind of working away from the center. And um, rolling it so you end up with the edge of the leaf looks like it's flicking out. You can do it there, look. It just gives it that edge. And also it gives you a thinner um, edge to the leaf as well. really wanted to get in underneath there so it looked like it was um properly separate from the actual um the, the bud inside as it were you can see the detail there that little tiny um stem at the, at the bottom i'm just trying to f straighten the edge the flat of that now so i can put in the actual um cut of the um, the leaves that sit behind the outer ones that aren't quite open yet. edge on these um, leaves at the back here, the petals, should I say. Just final bits and pieces around the back there, just trying to tuck that in behind final finishing bits trying to get some shadow edging there so it looks like it's absolutely um, two separate bits really A lot of this detail now is literally just tucking stuff in behind things to just give it that um, kind of look that you're trying to achieve. Just little bits like that there where I'm just sort of flicking that last little bit out. I came back to the um, the head of this flower many, many times. Thought I was there, and then I'd find another bit and go, no, nope, not happy with that. I'd come back to it again, which is why it's jumping around a little bit. It's a useful little knife here. This um, it was just a normal knife at one point, and I just really um, ground it right down. 
it's a bit like one of the pelican ones on steroids so it's the the end, end of this um the tip of this knife is really really tiny you can get right in i've had it for quite a while i did i thought i'd gone too thin with it when i made it so it might um, end up snapping off but no nope. it for ages and it seems to um hold itself well Yeah, this is um twitchy moment, should we say. <laughs> There's a real risk there that I can break off. That's just you just gotta be so gentle now. Yeah, bearing in mind that I've sped this up twice as fast as it is in real time, you can see how long each part of that takes. It does, you know, there is quite a bit of um, time spent on one little tiny bit. Tidying up the back of that. Um Again, trying to tuck it down so it looks like the uh, flower head sitting back against that leaf. Bit sharpening. Absolutely key when you're doing something like this. Um, fine is to keep your knife so sharp. And then you're not being, you're not tempted then to force anything. Good old tidy up now. Gonna create a nice um, edge where that uh, stem meets the bowl. final finishing touches now really just trying to get any lines out cut marks I've had in there
little little bit bit of um, attention to detail at the end I think that kind of makes it um ping as it were get in there now fairly happy with that so I'm putting on some um, beeswax and tongue oil um, butter that we make melt the two together and uh, working it into that um, lovely cherry wood Your toothbrush. So I put about three coats of that on in the end. So um, this was in between coats now. I'm just putting my little um, signature that I put on the bottom of my work now. did look at getting a brand made to do this but um, everyone kept telling me that because my stuff's so small that the um, brand would just bleed into it the detail would bleed into itself so I'd done a few of these to explain what I wanted as a brand and then I thought well it's probably just as um, good to do the a little signature like this so it takes a bit more time but it's a bit more personal Signing your name with a stamp, otherwise, I suppose, isn't it? <laughs> so, what I do when I've um carved that out is I've got some uh, black acrylic that I just go over F make sure I've got it all filled up not overly accurate because then uh, I let that dry and then I um, get a knife and scrape away the excess like this and you end up with a lovely um, fine finish on it you do this with um, any kind of um, lettering or fine stuff like this. Just makes it stand out a bit more. Quick sand. leather buff there she is well as always if you've made it to the end wow thank you for persevering I know it's quite a long one this one um, really appreciate you watching um, if you like the video comments are amazing um, like to know what people think this is all still quite new to me so um, really useful and um, if you're not already subscribed, it'd be really useful if you subscribe for the channel. Um, yeah, it helps all the algorithms and whatnot. So, um, yeah, really appreciate you watching. And uh, thanks again. I'll see you next time.